it is sometimes used in a physical sense of remaining or staying in a certain place, John 1 and 38. But it also used in a, it is also used in a spiritual sense as it is here in John 15. There is, of course, a sense in which Christ is holding on to us as when he says concerning his sheep, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand, sin in 28. But at the same time, we must hold on to him, that is, abide in him. He also abides or remains in us. In short, following Christ is a two-way street. True, both our decision to come to Christ and our ability to remain in him depend on divine initiative and power. But this does not nullify our responsibility to persevere in the faith. We are not merely coasting to heaven. We are pressing on, Philippians 3 and 14. Running a race as great a man of God as he was, Paul refused to presume upon God's saving grace. A branch that is severed from its tree or vine is thereby cut from the nutrients that produce fruit. To abide in Christ means to remain spiritually connected to Christ. Otherwise, no fruit can be produced. Although Jesus was speaking to his chosen apostles when he said, Ye are the branches, John 15 and 5. This applies to all followers of Christ both ancient and modern. Among other things, abiding in Christ makes it possible <coughs> for the believer to bring forth much fruit. This includes those qualities that make up the fruit of the Spirit, but it also certainly includes leading others to Christ. When Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing, he was not talking about secular activities. Even people who do not believe in God can accomplish many things in the world. But from the standpoint of that which has eternal value and significance, only what we do for Christ truly matters. And for that, we need him. As missionary C.T. Studd famously said, <coughs> only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. <laughs> okay, this is telling us that in order that abiding in the vine, because Jesus is the vine, that we have to stay connected. Well, we don't have to stay connected, but staying connected to him. Staying connected to him. Um, and it says that um, but at the same time we must hold on to him that is abiding in him and when we abide in him he stays with us as long as we're abiding in him he stays with us so it's a it's a two way street um, and then it says a branch that is severed from the true vine is therefore cut off if a branch is not productive, then it's cut off. And it says also that um, um, in the world, um, people can accomplish a lot of things in the world, but being in God, we can't do anything w without the Lord. So Jesus helps us to uh, do things in life and then as long as we are staying in the vine and connected, we um, have the fruit of the spirit. And we know what the fruit of the spirit is, love, joy, meekness, and all of that. As long as we're staying connected to the vine, we have the, uh, have the fruit of the spirit. All right, anybody else want to add some more to that? Mm -hmm. As she read about abiding in the vine. Uh, also, uh, there is 
uh, uh, we have to hold on uh, to Christ, but He's holding on to He's holding on to us. So we're not alone, and we're not doing this on our own. But He is uh, in the front ground and the background, and He He's given us the ability and the power to stay connected to the vine. Uh, and he said, nobody, no man, the scripture says, no man can pluck us out of his hand. But we have to stay connected and abide in the vine so that nothing like that can happen. And at other times, uh, we have to hold on to him. He will keep us if we want to be kept. And if we, if we continue to abide in him, continue to continue to grow, he will hold on to us. Mm-hmm. All right, that's true. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Also, we can we can remain in Him and He in us. Right. Now I love the part where she read and said, uh, "We are not merely thing to heaven. We are pressing on, running a race." Yeah. And you're not just posting. It's a press no, in this thing. Mar- yeah, we're not marking time. <laughs> no, no. You gotta, you gotta press. I mean, you you really gotta press. Press, you, yeah. You, you really have to be connected to this vine because so many things come your way that can uh uh don't your grow or stop you. And uh, I mean, so many things that the enemy have to throw at us to get us to go, try to get us to go back. Right. But we are connected to the to the main vine. If right. I, if we care, we have to uh, ignore some things that we hear, ignore some things that we see, and press our way. Because uh-huh. the, enemy will, the enemy will use whoever allow them, him to use them. Amen. Uh-huh. We have to press our way. Right. Because if, if we turn back, there's no hope for us. And this is a None. way from start to finish. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes, Something she read in here says uh, about the branch and when it's severed from the tree or vine, is cut off from what? Lifeline. From the new yeah. All right, it's the lifeline. Yes, that's true. But the nutrients that produce fruit, you're cut off from that. Mm-hmm. Once they went, once that branch is severed from that tree or vine, same thing with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, if we're yeah. separate from, from the tree, mm-hmm. we can't produce fruit. Fruit. That's right. All right. It's, and let's uh, look further down and what she read and see if there's something else. Oh, when, well, when Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. What the, What does that mean? You can't bear fruit. You can't bear fruit. <laughs> you can't do nothing without him. Without his spirit, you can't teach, you can't preach, you can't lead. You can't even uh, do any type of service yeah. without him. Mm-hmm. All right, people try. Yeah. And well, what happened to those people we hear preaching? And they are that running women, some running men, mm-hmm. men running men, women running women, and all that kind of stuff. But they still up there preaching. Mm-hmm. What can we say about okay. that? You could, the scripture says you could cause the many souls to come to Christ and lose your very own soul. We'll yes. do it, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mother Wilson mm-hmm. said that um, mm-hmm. they remember this uh, preacher that he was uh, in the hospital dying. And when they went to see him, he said he has brought many people to Christ. And now he's going to mm-hmm. die and go to hell. Now, that's sad. That's, that's very sad. Bad. Uh, yeah. He still had a choice to repent. 
he could have repented instead of saying that. What happened? Right. That's not right. Wow. And turn from his wicked ways. Right. Yeah. His mind and all that. Just tell him what happened. That's all he did. Uh, tell him that's they had the best thing, and then you lost it with your foolishness. No, uh, stuck, uh. stuck in your own way. Stuck, stuck in your own way. Uh, that's, that's amazing that you be on your deathbed and still confess hell instead of repenting. Oh, mm. boy. But mm. well, that's what you right. were all along, and your mind has not changed. Right. 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 Really, that's that. Yeah. Yeah.
And I said, it's amazing how some of those people survived. They went through something. We think we're going through something? No, sir. Not according to what those slaves went through. Praise God. Uh huh. A warning and a promise. Dead branches burned. Oh, my goodness. Who's reading? I read. I read. Who's read? I read. Okay. Just as a branch that does not remain connected to a rooted tree will weather and die, so it so it is with those who are anointed from Christ. Such dead branches are good for nothing but to be gathered and burned, while fire is sometimes used as a symbol for perfection perfection from sin. It is most often used as a symbol of judgment and destruction, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. While polls indicate that more people believe in heaven and have been in hell. If we take the Bible seriously, especially the teachings of Jesus, we must c- conclude that a fiery judgment awaits unbelievers. Many who put on profet- profess faith are nevertheless among the Lord. As Christ pointed out, even the ability to prophesy ex- um, exorcist demons and perform miracles is no guarantee that a person is a true believer. Jesus was not speaking of people losing their salvation either. since he said to them, I never knew you. If it Emphasize, I mean, verse 20, emphasize, the Lord chose his word carefully, and he, and he means what he says. The reality that we cannot um, be taken from the Lord's hand. On um, John 10 and 28, that nothing can separate us from God's love. Romans 8, 38, and 39. And that God is able to keep us from falling. Jude 1, 24. To not lead us to... Um, Proscriminus concerning our salvation. New, New Testament exhorted to faithfulness and obedience are not superfluous. The prospect of spiritual ones a destroying testimony and unle- unlessness of God's kingdom works are real and, oh, what's that, catastrophic? Catastrophic. Oh, catastrophic, okay. To make light of such things is to play into the devil's hand. Wherefore, I let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. First Corinthians 10 and 12. I tell you, warning. This is a warning and a promise. Yes. All right. Anything you see, uh, Desiree, and then the others can jump in there as well. Uh, it was basically saying that how we, if there was um, two, two um, point of views of the of the uh, natural and the spiritual of what's going to happen to you when you don't um, take God as as your savior. All right, others jump in and help her. It was used in fire as a symbolism. Go ahead. Uh, what about it? Go ahead. It was used in fire as a symbolism. Uh, yeah, but what about the fire as a symbolism? It was, it was used as a symbolism either for pur- purification from sin or dis- uh, judgment, destruction. That in the Old Testament and the New. Yes. Uh-huh. Anything else? Anybody? Somebody else? How we up? We're getting close to the end. Our time is running out. Come on. That's the old one. let you know such dead branches are good for nothing. Just to gather and burn. 
Yeah, yeah they use, uh, and, and you know those stoves, uh, y'all know about wooden, wooden stoves, as they call them. They used to get blankets and, you know, put them in those stoves. They have fire to keep them warm. That's the type of stuff those branches are for. All right, go ahead, uh, Evangelist. And it lets you know that that's what's going to happen. That's the same thing with us spiritually. That, um, you know, if you become a dead branch in that you good for nothing. Christ can't use you. You know, you, 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 you no good. You can't bear fruit. You can't witness. You, you can't, you know, you can't do nothing. So you're thrown aside. Yeah, you, you're dead spiritually. Right. So I'm trying to keep up like they, like they still, uh, uh, caught up with the Lord, but they're not. Imagine the Lord has told us about how he, what he used to do, and said, after the night, we'll see right through it. Uh-huh. All right. Anything else before we go to the next? And it says here, Christ means what he said. He said what he means, and he means what he said. So if you is like that, He's going to tell you, I never knew you. Depart from me, I know you're not. You worker of iniquity. Right. Somebody else was getting ready to say something. Oh, I got, I got to see if I'm, if y'all on, um, wait a minute. Yeah, we almost, we're getting ready to go into the next one. We were on, uh, uh, dead branches burned. A warning and a promise. So first off, it's a warning. And, then, and from that warning, he has given you a promise of what's going to be if you don't do the right, right. thing. And he's given you a promise of what will be if you do do the right thing. And the right. choice is up to us. Mm-hmm. Near the end, it says, to make light of such things is to play into the devil's hand. Wherefore, mm-hmm. let him that Think as he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. What that means? Right. Lest he backslide. Yeah, but more to than just lest he backslide, y'all have to do the whole thing together. It, it, to me, it seems as if he said, let those that think he standeth take heed. If you think you, you in good standard, you should be humble. Uh, unless you fall. So yeah, you can, it's in, early, in the, in the, early in the paragraph up a little bit, it says you might have the gift of prophecy to perform miracles and cast, exercise demons. And, and, and that doesn't make you a true believer. That's not guaranteed that you're a true believer. So that just goes, relates to, they take heed. Just because you have these gifts, you got to be humble with these gifts. You right. think you're doing it on your own? You think you're doing it on your own? And these are gifts of God. So uh-huh. take heed that you fall. Yeah, because they say, you know, people have gifts without repentance. So that doesn't right. mean that, uh-huh, that you fall. Take heed. Don't get a swelled head because... You're able to perform some miracles and, and some That's of the other right. things that you can uh, tell uh, uh, just uh, told us about. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that doesn't mean that you're in a higher than anybody else. No. Right. Right. Same thing and you got to take heed that you, you have to take heed that you're obedient to God and you're being led by God. Take heed, and that's why he told us to watch and pray. He didn't tell you to watch nobody else. He told you to watch yourself, that you don't enter into temptation, and you don't get a big head and think you better than anybody else, and it can't happen to you. You got to take heed, lest you fall. See, we can't judge people when they fall into various temptations or things happen and say, oh, that wouldn't be me, and I wouldn't do that. You don't know what you would do. That's why God said, take heed to yourself. And if any brother is found in the court, restore him the spirit of meekness. Restore him. Don't be as in jealous. But restore him in the spirit of meekness. Don't be so like we have to take like, heed like, and look at ourselves. Look right. at ourselves. Self-examination daily. 
and ask God, Lord, did I please you? Did I, did, is this the way you want me to do it? That's the way I feel it should be done. Right? And we don't want to be like Peter now. He felt that he was above all the disciples. They yeah, might, right. they might deny you. Yeah, they man. might do, do that, but not me. But what did oh, Jesus say to him? Before the conflict, that's right. Three times. And what happened? He denied him. He denied him. And when did he realize what Jesus was really saying? And the cock crew. That's it's right. Every time. That's what he realized. You know, he can say, uh oh, ooh. You know, sometimes we come to reality when things like that happen, you know. And that's what came to Peter's reality. But did, God, but, but did Jesus kick him to the curb? No. No, he didn't. No. Oh, he didn't. You're willing to repent? You're willing to show your sorrow? He will have open arms. No matter yeah. what you're And that's the wonderful yeah. thing about it. All right, all the time yeah. is running out. We got to run. God's glory magnified. Someone, please. Magda Odom, have you read? Oh. Who's reading? God's glory magnified. Come on, Deacon Taylor. Jesus promised that the prayers of those who re remain steadfastly in him would always be answered. Although, although God answers all prayers with either yes, no, or wait. Keep in mind that this promise was originally spoken to Jesus' apostles. How and when their prayers were answered may differ from how God answers ours. Other passages, however, assure us that God's people can expect to be heard by our Heavenly Father. We should not take this to mean that everything we pray for will automatically be granted, Automatic will be automatically granted. It is common for even Christians to pray amiss and for the wrong things. As it was with Jesus, our words and works should be for the purpose of glorifying God. One way to bring glory to God is to bear much fruit. This is in this way, we show that we are true disciples of Christ. A fruitless disciple is an oxymoron or, self, or a self-contradiction. Bearing fruit is reflected in our willingness to keep his commandments and to love one another. Whether dealing with the original apostles or modern-day disciples, this does not mean it will be easy to live the Christian life. As the word, world hated Christ, so we'll also always hate his followers. Okay. What can we say real quick? We should stay steadfast with our prayers and that God will answer our prayers. Whether it be he, he say yes or no or wait. But he right. hears our prayers when we bring it before him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he hears them, and he gives us an answer. May not be what we want, but he gives us an answer. Yeah. <laughs> you say he said yes, no, or wait. wait. And people don't like to wait. Patients come in there. Uh, what's an uh, oxymoron? He said, as fruitless disciple is an oxymoron. Did anybody look that up? Where, where I mean, not well, on the nothing that says a self-contradiction meaning that you you're contradicting who you say you are. So what you do? All right. Now, when you deal with a oxymoron, that's right. You are contradiction. Uh, 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 contradicting. You have words that um, uh, you know, they seem like they should be opposite of one another. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example uh, that you could use, but they, you know, like, like sometimes they might say warm, frozen, or whatever. Uh, those are two different things, but um, they're opposite, yeah. But uh, they use them together. Okay, so a fruitless disciple is one 
is like an oxymoron. Self-contradiction, contradicting yourself or whatever you do because you're fruitless. But if you're fruitless, that's not a part of your character. No, but you're trying to display it is. Yeah, you're trying to act and like you're it going is. against the truth. Mm-hmm. And right. you're contradicting and going against the truth. And people can see it, too. All right. Okay, I had a question here. Uh, what promise did Jesus make about prayer? That it would always be heard and answered. He would answer. Right. Okay. All right, let's look over here real quick. Practical points. Someone someone read the first two. Somebody else read the next two. And somebody read the last two. True life is in Jesus, and it is given to us by the Father, John 15 and 1. Those who belong to God have a responsibility to proclaim who he is, verse 2 and 3. Amen. Amen. True to form. We cannot be in God if we are living apart from Christ, verse 4 and 5. Every Christian should make a positive impact on the world through the gospel. Right. Abiding in Christ. Abiding in Christ is an important key to answer prayer, verse 7. Our desire should be to accomplish as much for the Lord as possible. And that should be our desire. And that abiding in Christ is, a, is an important key to answer prayer. Uh, if you find, like my, my cousin told her mother years ago, I don't think God uh, hears my prayers. Well, well, then that means you know you need to do something. God moves back, you got to move forward. And try to get uh, close to him. And, and, and if you don't have salvation, get salvation. A lot of times people want Christ for, to uh, handle their problem, but they don't want to give him their lives. Okay. Now, at the bottom here on the research, uh, oh, the read number five. On the research and discussion. Abiding in Christ is a command rather than a suggestion. What are some consequences for not abiding in Christ? Uh, verse 6. Can somebody give me one real quick? There's a command. What is a command? An order. An order? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. An order. Exactly. Ab- you must do or must not do. Abide in me and I uh-huh. in you. What are some consequences? What are some consequences if we don't abide in Christ? Give me something specific. We are cast forth as a branch. And it's with right? and what else? men gather them and cast them into the fire. And they are right. Well, that helps us. Mm-hmm. Okay, if we don't straighten up. That's right. Someone else? Took mine. Well, that's it. We're not abiding in Christ. You die spiritually. Mm-hmm. You'll be back out there in sin. A whole lot of things can happen to us if we don't abide in Christ. We're disconnected from the vine. That's death right there. All right, now. And the scripture says, uh, love one another as I have loved you. Now, I'll read it at the bottom of the golden text illuminated. It says, uh, without me, you can do nothing. It is only by abiding in the vine that we are able to love in this way. In other words, this love is the consequence of faith, which truly allow, allows us to abide in him. Faith truly allows us to abide in him. We thank God for the Sunday school this morning, for everyone's participation, discussion, and 
and your knowledge, praise God, and you're going to get off so that you can have a few minutes to um, get water or what have you before we start our morning service at 11. All right. Uh, Elder Robinson, you want to uh, dismiss the Sunday school? Uh, amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Uh, may the Lord watch between me and thee. May the Lord watch between me and thee. Why we absent? Why we absent? One from another. One from another. Let the Sunday school say, Amen. 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 We'll see you. We'll hear you at eleven. Praise God. I think now you can cut off and get back on with this uh, uh, line that we have now. Okay. So you can shut off if you want it and come back on. Or you can leave it open. All right. Yeah, tough one. 